So before we begin this video, I want to issue a quick correction. So throughout this video, I actually used the incorrect gas constant. So the universal gas constant is actually this number, 0 0.08206. Throughout the video, I'm going to use this value 0 0.08314. This is incorrect, right? So make sure you correct uh, your notes or if you're taking notes or if you're just watching the video, make sure you note that this is the correct value value of the gas constant, not the value that I'm going to use in this video. This uh, 0.08206 is the correct value for the gas constant. With that correction, let's move on to the video. In this video, we're going to introduce the ideal gas law. Now, in one of the previous videos, we introduced the three fundamental gas laws, Boyle's law, which relates this or establishes this inverse proportionality between volume and pressure. Charles's law that establishes the direct proportionality between volume and temperature, and Avogadro's law that establishes a direct proportionality between volume and the number of moles, right? What we're going to call an ideal gas is any gas that follows these proportionality statements exactly. So an ideal gas, Is going to be any gas that can be accurately described by Boyle's law, Charles's law, and Avogadro's law, right? And it just so happens that gases that are at fairly normal pressures, atmospheric pressures, pretty low normal pressures, uh, tend to follow these laws almost exactly. And so we can use uh, these laws in order to describe a wide, a wide array of gases fairly accurately. And we can use these three fundamental equations in order to build up a, a single unifying equation for an ideal gas. So for the ideal gas law, I want you to think of it as a synthesis of all three of these guys, right? So if we uh, combine all three, Boyle's law, Charles's law, Avogadro's law, right? We have a relationship for volume uh, that relates it to temperature, pressure, and the number of moles, right? So we'll have one unifying constant for volume's relationship to all three of these properties. We'll call it R, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about R in a second. Uh, but basically, you have the volume is going to be equal to R times T times N over P, right? This maintains all of the proportionalities, all of the relationships that were uh, observed in the fundamental gas laws uh, and, and puts them in one single unifying equation, right? The direct proportionality of volume to temperature and the number of moles, the inverse proportionality between pressure and volume. Now, if you've seen the ideal gas law before, you're probably more familiar with seeing it in the following form, where it says PV is equal to NRT. Right? This is just a rearrangement of this equation. Now, let's talk a little bit more about R. R is very important. R is going to be our universal gas constant. So universal gas constant. And it has a value. Um, it has multiple values depending on your, your units, right? Uh, but the one that is used most often Right, is this value. So 0 0.08314. And the units for that is liter ATM per mole per Kelvin. Right now, I know that is a mouthful, but think about what the gas constant is doing and these units make sense. The gas constant is relating volume and pressure and amount and temperature, right? So it makes sense that it should have a unit for all four, right? So that's why it has this extremely long unit, right? And like I said, you know, it's, it's gonna have different units depending on which, um, or different value based on which units you choose, but it's really just a conversion of this same number, right? So R is a single constant, but it can take on different forms based on how you uh, convert the units, right? Whether you're using ATMs or Pascals or, liters versus, you know, uh, meters cubed or something like that, right? So, uh, but all of this unifies these relationships into one powerful equation that defines an ideal gas, one that follows these fundamental laws exactly. Okay, let's look at an example problem. 
putting this guy to use. So this problem says a steel reaction vessel of a bomb calorimeter, which has a volume of 75 milliliters, is charged with oxygen gas to a pressure of 14.5 atm at 22 degrees Celsius. Calculate the moles of oxygen in this reaction vessel, right? So you're given some properties of this gas sample and it's asking you to calculate the amount of gas that's in the container. This becomes easy when you think about the ideal gas law. So as we were doing with the problems uh, looking at the fundamental gas law, let's first put out what we've been given, right? So write down everything that we've been given. What do we know about this gas? Well, we know that its volume is 75 milliliters. We know that its pressure is 14.5 atm. And we know that its temperature is 22 degrees C. We also know the gas constant, right? We always have R, right? So our R value, 0 0.08 or, yeah, 8314 liter ATM per mole per Kelvin. Right, so uh, one thing that you'll notice here, right, if we look at our gas constant, looking at the units for our gas constant, um, we have a bit of a units issue here based on the, the numbers that we've been given, right? Our gas constant uh, considers volume in liters. We've been given a volume in milliliters. Um, it also considers a temperature in Kelvin, and we've been given a temperature in Celsius, right? So we want to make both of those conversions. So let's do that. So first we want to convert our volume to liters. So we got 75 milliliters. We want to convert that guy to liters. So we know that in one liter, we have 1,000 milliliters. So that's going to give us a volume of 0 0.075 liters, right? And for temperature, we know that 22 degrees C uh, is going to be, uh, you know, to convert to Kelvin, you just add 273.15. So that's going to give you 295.15 Kelvin for your temperature. So now we have a pressure in ATM, temperature in Kelvin, volume in liters. So we should be good as far as our units being consistent with our gas constant, right? Now, before we move on, I want to say something about temperature. Whenever you're using the ideal gas law, you want to convert your temperature to Kelvin, right? And it has even more to do with, you know, more than just this gas constants unit. Um, the absolute temperature scale is useful in this case because it doesn't yield any negative values. And that's going to be huge for us. Uh, imagine if you were plugging in a negative uh, temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit, which is easily achievable. Um, if you do that, you could end up getting an answer that gives you a negative volume. And we don't really have a, a physical interpretation for a negative volume, right? Or a negative pressure. These are always positive values. So it's very important that you always convert your temperatures to Kelvin, whether you're given it in Celsius or Fahrenheit or what have you, uh, you always wanna convert that temperature to Kelvin. Okay, so now that we've done these conversions, we've got everything we need to plug in and solve here, right? So considering our ideal gas law, PV is equal to NRT, Right now, we just want to uh, realize what we're solving for, isolate it algebraically, and plug it in. So uh, we're trying to calculate the number of moles of oxygen. So we want to isolate N in the ideal gas law. So we do our algebra here. N is equal to PV over RT. Now, all we have to do is just plug in everything and get our final answer. Right? So we got 14.5 atm times our volume, which is 0 0.075 liters. Our gas constant, which is 0 0.08314 liters per, uh, well, liters ATM per mole per Kelvin, right? Times our final temp or our temperature, which is 295.15 Kelvin. 
Okay, so first thing you wanna do here is just make sure that your units are good, right? So we went ahead and handled our units ahead of time, but you can catch any mistakes if you check your units here, right? Pressure uh, cancels out there, volume cancels out here, temperature cancels here. So we should be left with a final unit in moles, which makes sense because that's what we're solving for, right? So our final N is going to be 0.044 moles of oxygen gas, right? So that's an application of the ideal gas law to solve for the amount of your gas given its properties, right? The temperature, the pressure, the volume that it takes up, right? If you have that information, then you can solve for the number of moles. Same thing with any of these variables, right? If you have the pressure, volume, and the amount, you can solve for the temperature. If you have the volume, the number of moles, and the temperature, you can solve for the pressure, right? The ideal gas law gives you a unifying equation to be able to solve for gas properties.